Hey what's up guys, welcome to the channel, my name is Mira and today we're gonna be talking about Velvet Spiders. I decided to make a second video on our Eresus Valkinari and that is simply because the first video didn't have enough footage. It had basically just me building its enclosure and then quick rehouse and I believe there was a feeding. But in this video you guys gonna see a lot more footage. I also wanna add some interesting observations and few facts that I learned since then. And I'm gonna add some care tips as well. Just to keep everything in one place i'm gonna divide this video into three different chapters first one's gonna be enclosures second's gonna be food and water requirements and third's gonna be biology and behavior One thing that I find really interesting about Arasus spiders, and you guys see it here, is when they hunt, they often grab their prey by its limb, and it's either a leg or a wing, and then they work their way up to the body. And when from time to time I see them grabbing their prey by head or by different body parts, it's usually just like they nibble on it. They almost look like they barely touch in their prey. And eventually when the prey is subdued, they're gonna start flipping it around and you guys see those quick little bites that they deliver. And at this point she's dragging her prey back to her burrow, but this is actually pretty funny because pretty often when she's outside of her burrow and she grabs her lunch she looks like she loses any sense of direction and i don't know if it's because she's so focused on her food she's so food driven or she is very particular about the way she's gonna enter her burrow and her nest because as you guys can see uh, the hole the entrance to her burrow is right here she can basically go in right now but no coco is very particular we call her coco so me and my wife we always laugh about it. I mean, how can you not do it? It's so funny. It's so hard to know what is going on in that little velvet hat. She has to go in butt first. I think so too. So. Right than that. or different the whole entirely. Oh no, another turn around must be we were wrong. This angle, but first. There we go. There we go, you found it girl. You're so smart. For more footage, some care tips, interesting observations and some facts that I was able to research wait after the intro. But first let me explain, when you guys hear me saying Coco, we named our little Arasu spider Coco after that episode of Seinfeld where George wanted to be called T-Bone and they ended up calling him Coco, Coco the monkey, because he has these like crazy moves and our spider has crazy moves like that too. But not only that, our spider is also about that comfortable life because it's a velvet spider, basically surrounded, you know, with velvet, not in reality, but you know, imaginary and he lives in a tribe mall so doesn't get much more comfortable than that and gets food delivered right to its mouth i mean come on if rrs spider is not about that comfortable life then i don't know who is but now back to enclosures okay so this is one of our first clips of coco she's a tiny little sling there you guys can see her that little black speck that's her and this is her first enclosure and basically it's just composed of a little bit of substrate a little bit of dry moss and some twigs as anchors for her webs and she creates a nest inside of that moss you guys can see she has a house fly in there even though she's pretty small but i'm gonna talk more about food in the next chapter rsu spiders they don't need water dishes because they like it really dry and arid 
And this was her second enclosure. Oh, it has a ply in there again. This is during the feeding time, but we're not gonna see her eating right here. We just wanna show you the setup. And it's basically just dry moss again and some twigs. And the rehouses are really easy because you just take their old home and just put the old home into the newer one, bigger one. And that's about it. You guys can go check it out in that first RSS video that we did on our channel. Erasus spiders are excellent hunters as you guys can see here. Their web is actually non-sticky so they rely on the prey to get tangled in it. And I feed mine with a variety of insects. Anything from flies to crickets to different types of cockroaches to even hornworm caterpillar. And I usually don't feed my spiders prey this big, but sometimes they just get a little treat, little cheat meal. And after that, I usually don't feed them for extended period of time until they basically ready for more prey and they slim down. And you guys can also see she's pretty curious and pretty easygoing spider. She's feeling something, she's feeling some vibrations on her webbing and she's like, oh, what's going on? So she will come out, which is amazing if you want to take some pictures of RSU spider. <laughs> and they had a long standoff, so I just kind of cut it a little bit shorter. I'm not thinking about the way you keep my world from spinning I'm just thinking about your eyes Just don't know if I've been faking or pretending But I know I never felt so damn alive I don't know if I believe the information given That there was someone by your side Coming back inside my body for a second There is no way that I'm never gonna try Hello and here we are feeding Coco a little bit more appropriate size prey. Basically appropriate size prey is a prey that's not bigger than their abdomen. One thing that I urge a little bit to be cautious about is crickets, because crickets can fight back. So if you want to feed your spider a cheat meal, something a little bit bigger, I would probably choose something different than a big cricket. I would probably choose something like a big cockroach or big fly or a big hornworm caterpillar, something that doesn't fight back basically, so you don't have to worry about the health and well-being of your spider and if you are caring for sling i recommend feeding them fruit flies or you can alternatively pre-kill small cricket or cockroach and it wouldn't hurt if the prey is still twitching a little bit here you can see she's finally going for it a lot of times they have these standoffs and she just stays there and waits until the prey moves which is perfect opportunity for me to take some pictures so those of you guys follow me on instagram you, you guys know that i have a bunch of pictures of my rs's already And when it comes to water requirements, there are basically none. I don't have a water dish in her enclosure. Look at her, she's ready for the meal. She is always ready to eat. This is so funny. So basically all I do, maybe once every two or three months, I miss one side of her enclosure. And by that, I mean just the wall of the enclosure, just few droplets and maybe few droplets on her webbing. And that's about it. They come from really dry environment. They get most of their moisture from their prey. And as you guys can see, she's grabbing the fly by its leg again. This is definitely their strategy. One thing that I want to say about RSU spider is their female exhibit remarkable maternal care. They actually liquefy the inside their organs in order to feed their spiderlings. So when the spiderlings are born, the mother starts liquefying her inside and then she becomes the first meal for the spiderlings. They put their life down for the future generation. It's remarkable. Here you guys can see she actually took out her old molt, but that's not what these spiders usually do. They usually keep like a trophy wall inside of their nest and basically the old prey that they kill they hang it in there. If the spiders left the remains of their prey outside it would make their nest a lot more obvious to predators like wasps and others. So this is just basically for their safety. 
I also enjoyed their curiosity. Look how easy it was to tickle her out and get her out of the enclosure. Oh, and it's another feeding video. Didn't even realize that, but you see, we feed her crickets too. When Coco was little, she was very shy and she spent most of her time hiding, but now that she's a little bigger, she sits outside really often and she even allows me to open the lid that's magnetic, so it sometimes shakes her enclosure and usually spiders don't like it, but she's usually very patient with me and you guys can see I can get nice footage of her and take a look at her without all that plastic around, so that's pretty amazing. Eresus Valkinari comes from Mediterranean, that's why they like it so dry, and they are sometimes called ladybird spiders as well, because the males resemble ladybirds, ladybugs, because in their final molt they gain this beautiful red coloring on their abdomen. Males also live shorter lives, where females live 3 to 4 years, males usually only live up to 2.5 years. Males are also significantly smaller and they only grow up to their body around 1 cm, which is like a little bit less than half of an inch, and the females can get up to 18 mm their body, which is almost close to an inch, well, I wanna say like 3 quarters of an inch, maybe 2 thirds of an inch, something around there. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, notifications and subscribe button. Those of you who follow me on Instagram maybe know this in my stories that I've been working as my day job on Into the Spider-Verse 2, which is the animated movie by Sony. It's been an amazing experience. I can't really tell you anything about it because I could get fired for it. But besides that, I'm working on it as an artist. And trailer to our movie just came out, so if you guys wanna go see it, go check it out. It's on YouTube. It looks pretty awesome. I'm really happy and really proud. Them. If you guys still missing some Christmas presents and you actually like Erasus spiders and maybe you even like Fight Club, this is one of our t-shirts. It has Erasus right here. As at Norton, Brad Pitt is actually heteropoda David Bowie. We have a free shipping on these and we have some other bugs in famous movies designs on our website www.spidercafe.shop. So go check it out. Free shipping in the United States. And we are also in process of publishing our notebooks and coloring book. The notebooks are basically ready, they're looking pretty cool. Another exciting news, we have our coloring book out. And as you guys can see, the photos look really amazing. I was really pleased with their final results. It has 10 photos that then you can color. And it's mainly for kids, uh, because like the information, there's nothing scientific, it's just the basic information, but it's informative, it has some cool stuff in there. You know, some interesting facts about jumpers. Here is where you color it. Hated it. This is where you color it. And there is 10 of these pages. Oh, this one doesn't want to go. Tarantula. Mantis, etc, etc. 10 pictures. It's on Amazon, guys. I'm going to post the link below. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you soon. So I can write it down and become the perfect man for you Would you like what you don't, you should never be flying so